Come on England, it's time to make 2010 the year, the year that we can once again hold up that coveted cup. Let's show the world that we can rule the roost. Let's show the world that we have the class to kick a football into the future and not always look back to a 1966 past. It's time to bring the goods home so we can once again sit on that World Cup throne. I've been, we've been, I've been, we've been waiting, waiting, waiting to celebrate, waiting for victory. <laughs> you had the hopes and dreams of many and the soles of your feet and the tips of your toes. You have the power to make a grown man cry with joy or sob with unconsolable sorrow. Come on, England. Forget about the pampering and the faffing around. Forget about about waxing your chest or your legs just go out there and fight fight till there's nothing left go out there and do do your very best come on you idiot pass the ball man you missed I can't believe it what have you got legs made of jelly my two-year-old brother can play better than that in fact I'll tell you what my six-month-old sister can play better than that all right all right let go let go of my neck I was only joking as a kid football was a great equalizer anyone could play from the quietest to the poorest to the kid who hardly spoke English. You see, the estate was a rough place. National Front were rife and families that lived there for years acted like they owned the place and they didn't want to give up an inch of turf. <laughs> but the saving grace was Thaxton Adventure Playground with this scruffy football pitch and youth workers who tried to get us to get on. They'd be like, oi, <laughs> keep the noise down. Oi, you lot, why don't you just sort it out and play a game of football and stop fighting? The biggest kid was always in the goal. You know, the one with the massive shoulders, so big that he blocked up the whole goal and also blocked up any clouds and hands so massive. He looked like he could catch the sun, the stars and the moon all in one go. One of the teams would strip off their shirts. Me, obviously I kept mine on. But being so boyish looking, it took a while to convince those that didn't know me that I was a girl. Flat chested, short hair, but yes, I was a girl. Why is she playing on our team? Why have we got a girl on our team? You know girls can't play football. Why is she playing on our team? I didn't mind what side I played on. I never minded what position I played. I just wanted to kick at football. And I soon showed them, those boys who refused to pass the ball or ignored me. They soon learnt when I dribbled and the opposition scattered like bowling pins. They soon learnt when my headers always hit the mark. They soon learnt when I ran up and down the pitch without tiring and my lungs stayed strong. Unlike my friends who were smokers. <laughs> Go on, go on, play without me. I'll catch up in a minute. <coughs> Football was a great equaliser. Anyone could play. You either loved it or you hated it. One strike could shut up the cockiest kid and another could propel a complete unknown into popularity he could only dream of. Oi, what's your name? What team you on? Oh my God, you're an amazing football player. Would you say your name was? You better play for our team next time. You better play for our team next time. Metropolitan Police, five-a-side football competition, a yearly event. The police wanted to make great links with the youth. <laughs> we didn't care about them. All we cared about was a shiny medal or trophy to take home so we could show off at school on Monday. Harrow Youth Cup, with its massive indoor pitch, was the venue. We'd be all kitted out by local businesses. Yeah, of course there were fights, there was tears, there was bashing, there was bruises, sweaty bodies colliding, legs and arms dangling from overhead seating. Oh my gosh, it was like a mad teenage coliseum of absolute madness, screaming, yelling, shouting, effing and blinding. And it was us, back to the venture playground against everybody else, African, British, English, Irish, all of us together. And it didn't matter, no, it didn't really matter if we didn't get a trophy or a medal, because we all piled back in the minibus on the way home with broken doors and seat belts that never done in and a radio station that only played one 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 tune we didn't care we were exhausted but we were satisfied there were two green bottles sitting on the wall two green bottles sitting on the wall and if one green bottle should accidentally fall there'd be one green bottle sitting on the wall there were two local teams Fulham and Chelsea but back then there weren't many black supporters in the crowd, so us kids tended to stay out the way. <laughs> we tended to stay out the way when the blue-shirted, white-faced tribes of men chanted and marched through our street. But they didn't take away my love of the game. I couldn't let a few people spoil something that took away all my worries. You see, I used to dream that I was the only girl in a Premier League team. 
I had my own changing room, my own hunky masseur, my own jacuzzi and thousands of fans who would chant my name, cat, 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 cat. By the late 80s, black footballers were really starting to break into the premiership team. There was John Barnes at Liverpool and Rod and Ray Wallace at Manchester United and West Ham. Paul Ince at West Ham and Man United. And even Mark Walters went all the way up to Glasgow Rangers. They even kicked out some of their fans for racially abusing him. I don't know how those players done it. There was no Lex kick racism out of football then. They just held their heads down, keep the anger in and show their doubters what they could do with their feet. I really don't know if I could have done that. I really don't know. Push the anger down, push the anger down, keep the red in check, keep the red in check, deep breath, deep breath, push the anger down, keep the red in check, deep breath, deep breath, dodge the banana skins and the monkey toys, dodge the banana skins and the monkey toys, block out the noise, block out the noise, block out the noise. So now things have come a full circle and the World Cup is being held in South Africa, a nation that will welcome lost sons with open arms. Sons who now reside in Western homes and hold coloured flags, but still they walk with African bones. Because you know what? It really is time for England to win. Because you know what? 1966 was a long time ago. 1966, Muhammad Ali fought Henry Cooper twice in London and he won. 1966, Star Trek was aired for the very first time. 1966, Vietnam War was still being fought. 1966, Labour were in power and Harold Wilson was the Prime Minister. 1966, the Beatles, Dusty Springfield, Nancy Frank Sinatra, the Four Tops all had number one hits. 1966, the Black Panthers were formed. 1966, Martin Luther King only had two more years to live and man had yet to walk on the moon. 1966, Malcolm X had been dead for just over a year and John F. Kennedy dead for over three. 1966, it was all about the mods, their scooters and their tailor-made suits. 1966, Mike Tyson and Haley Berry were born. 1966, one more year and my mum would come all the way from Grenada to England. 1966, it was all about the skinheads, Jamaican scar, Ben Sherman shirts, Fred Perry shirts and Lee Vi G. There was no internet, no Facebook, no Bebo, no MySpace. There was no colour TV, MP3. There was no Posh Spice and David Beckham. And there was definitely no hip hop. So come on England, let's make 2010 the year. The year that we put England on the map. Let's show the world that we can rule the roost. Let's show the world that we have the class to kick the ball into the future and not always look to the past. Because 1966 was a long time ago and it's time to bring the goods home so we can once again sit on, sit on the World Cup throne. Because we've been waiting, 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 waiting for victory. Waiting, 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 waiting to celebrate. You have the hopes and dreams of many in the soles of your feet and in the tips of your toes. You have the power to make a grown man cry with joy or sob with uncontrollable sorrow. Forget about the pampering, the faffing around or whether you should shave your legs or your chest. Just go out there and fight. Fight till there's nothing left. Go out there and do, do what you do best.